Assalamu alaikum everyone, this is Farwa Batool, your O-level computer science instructor and welcome to another video. Here we are going to talk about basic data types. In my previous video, we are done with integers and constants. So you must know that integer and constants are the data stores, the name data stores that uh, have some values in them. Now, we will talk about that what are the data that can be stored in the variable and constants. So look at here, the basic data types. In the previous video, you have already seen integers. Integer is one of the one of the data type that is being used to store the numeric data. So let me just quickly tell you that how many different type of data you can store in your variable and constants. So let's just quickly start with number one, integer. The integer data type allows you to store a positive or a negative whole number in your variable and that number you can use for mathematical operators. So let's take an example for integers. If it is a whole number, that can be positive or negative. So, it means that integer can store any numeric value like 21, minus 32, 47, 100 or 1000 like this. It is a numeric data that we can store in the integers. It can be positive or negative and the good thing about integers is that you can use them in mathematical operators. What are the mathematical operators? Like your addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, modulus, like these kind of functions. You can simply do like this if variable x has a value 2 and variable y has a value 3. So how you can do it in programming if you want to take a sum of them, you can just simply write x plus y so that the sum of their values will be calculated. So remember that for such kind of data, you need to specify their data types as integers. So they need to be integers in order to have calculation or use the mathematical operators with them. Now let's move towards the second data type that is called real. The real data type is just like the integers, but we can have the fractional part with them. Yes, these are the these are not the whole numbers. Whole number means that they doesn't have any fractional part. There is no decimal part to the whole numbers. So we say that the real numbers are basically the numeric numbers that have the fractional part with them. And they can also be positive or negative numbers with fractional part or we say the decimal part. Let me give you an example. The example of real can be 2.79 minus 5.71 like this kind of data is known as real. Now the third data type is going to be and also one more thing you can also use these numerical data with your mathematical operators like you can use them with plus minus multiplication division and modulus and lot of other mathematical functions only like the power so like this now number three is these are the two numerical data types and the third one is going to be a character character or we can say char char is basically storing a single character. Single character means that either it can store, let's suppose A, or it can store G, or it can store small a, or it can store like, also it can store numbers, but these numbers will not be incorporated in mathematical uh, operators. They cannot be solved. They cannot be calculated or involved as a mathematical or numerical number. They will be just cre 
treated as a character. So all the characters that are available in your keyboard, you can just simply add them as a character car variable. Let's suppose a question mark you want to store. Let's suppose a comma you can store. So basically a car variable sorry char variable is having a space in which you can only store one character that's it and you can name that box according to your uh, like according to the program that you are building you can just simply name it as x and you can store the value of x here that can be any symbol at the rate or it can be abc it can be one two three it can be just one character. That's the point. Okay, next thing is your string. So the fourth one is the string. A string is very, very important because it can hold a lot of data in that. Okay, you can specify the length of the string as well, but normally we just, we can store a lot of characters, several characters in the string. And one more thing is that they can also have no character. You can have an empty string as well. So a string is such a data type. Let's suppose we make a data type string for a variable named. I have a name variable. The variable name is, uh, okay, let's just make it student name because it is difficult for me to make you understand. Okay, the name of my variable is student name and this name specifies that the value that is to be stored in the variable must be any name of your student. Let's suppose Ahmad. So this is how the string works. If you have more than one character to store, you are definitely going to use a string and sometimes we don't have anything to store. So you can just name a variable x that is a string and you can just keep this space empty so that we can we just know that this variable x has no value or it, uh, it is an empty string so here we go now the final thing is your boolean okay just making you clear about this string you can also save the whole sentence here like my name is Ahmad. So a string means that there can be the several characters that you can store in the variable named student name or any any name that you can give to the string. The point is that it can store multiple characters into it and also it can include numbers like one, two, three. You can whenever you want to save your password, you have to use a string data type. Let's suppose the variable is name is password and you can simply store password into it including any symbols including numbers as well they will all be treated as characters i hope the things are clear to you so far now let me quickly move towards the fifth data type and that is a boolean data type boolean data type is going to store two values only first one is true and the other one is false so these are basically used for the conditional statements for the if then else statements where you have to see the conditions either the condition is true or false or sometimes you can just simply put a value true in a boolean or a false and you can use it anywhere in your program. Okay, so remember that in a Boolean data type, if your variable has a Boolean data type, it can only store two values, either it will be true or it will be false. So this is all. Now let me quickly go towards Intel IG, IDE for Java development. So I can just make you clear about all of these data types, how we can specify data types to our variables so let's just quickly do that i have already made one video for this how to download intel ig and install it in your computer 
So if you want to watch that, go ahead because it is very important to practice along with explanation. So let me just quickly clean up all this code that I did in the previous video. Okay, here, this is basically the main class. If you see the source folder on your left side, there is a main class. Inside, I open that and inside the main method, you are going to do your coding or programming. So let's just specify the different data types to our variables. Okay, the first one I will specify int integer. Okay, just keep it small int. Now, let's suppose it is my first integer. Okay, first integer is the name of my variable and I am going to store a value 500 into it. This is how you can aspire specify an integer value now press enter the second thing is your real real is basically a value with the decimal in it so we can have float keyword for it or a double keyword for it float is basically uh, storing uh, a limited uh, we can say a limited range of numbers like it can be 25.00001 or if you want more bigger fractional part so you must go with the double uh like double keyword so float and double both are being used for real data type that can hold float first let me just write down it is my second mm, real it's a real data type i'm storing a real number into it then equals and you can store 25.88 let's suppose so you can store any number with the decimal part okay this is what we call float now next is you can also use double with this because double and float both are being used to store the real numbers or the data type that is real the decimal numbers you can use double then it will be your third variable but let's name it as real because this is a real data type okay equals and let me just specify i just want to tell you the difference between float data type and double both are going to carry the decimal numbers but the thing is double can hold the greater number it has more space than the float so if you specify the variable in float data type it has a limited space but if you want a very very large decimal number to be stored then you must go with the double data type so here we go the next thing we have is character let's use char data type to store a character this is going to be my fourth variable let's name it fourth char equals remember that in order to specify character you need to use this commas inside these commas you will be using any character like d or you can use any symbol like percentage so it this character is going to be stored in your variable named fourth char now let's go down this is your character how you can specify the character okay remember that i'm using java so i will be using the syntax for java if you will use some other language you must follow the syntax of your language let's specify string string then it is going to be my fifth variable named named as fifth string okay now in strings when you are specifying strings you must use quotations in the quotations you can write down your 
whole thing. This is my, let's just write anything. This is my programming class. This is how you can do the work. You have specified this string as well with the name fifth string and it is holding the value. This is my programming class. Now, finally, is your Boolean data type. So, you will just write down Boolean. Specify the data type. Then, you will write the name of your variable. Let's suppose it is my sixth variable, sixth bool. Let's name it as sixth bool equals to. You can have a true or false value into it. So, let's just make it true. For instance, it is storing value true. Oh, there's something wrong. Remember to use, sorry for this, small letters, small true. So, this is what you have stored in your Boolean operate uh, variable now these are all the data types that we have used now let me just quickly write down the output statement so that i can show you that how we can display all of these values system dot out dot print ln now let me specify quickly here okay i'm just writing down the code and then i will tell you that what i have done This is an integer value. Okay. Now, remember to write down the variable name after your quotations. Remember to write the variable name after the quotations in your output statement because this is going to display the value of the variable. Otherwise, inside means that if you will keep it inside the quotations, then it means that this is going to print just a message or it will just print the name of the variable. I have uh, explained everything in the last video. You can just go ahead and watch that. Let me just quickly write down the code here. This is an, this is a real value okay so just write down a plus sign remember to write the plus and then write down second real it's a real value now i'm qu quickly copying this line so that i can show you the other real value that is stored in my third real variable because one I have used for with float keyword and one I have used for with double keyword. Copy, paste, paste. Let me just make the changes here. This is going to be your fourth. This is a character. This is fifth. This is a string. And this is your six i'm just changing the variable names so that their values will be printed two are rails fourth character is a character write down this is a character value then this one the fifth is your string so it is a string value and the last one is your boolean so this is a boolean value so this is how you can specify your output statements and let's see that if these values will be printed or not okay just before running your program just look at some of the lines this line shows some error so what you can do you you can just go to the suggestion here just look at this it says cast to float it means that you need to specify here float so that this number will be treated as a float value to be stored in second rail so these are the small things we need to take care of so we cannot directly uh, store some decimal number into variable if it is a float we need to cast 
or we can say it convert this number into float and then we will store in the variable. Okay, now this is the time to print all of these variables. Go to this triangle, press this. Now let's wait for the execution of your program. Wow, very good. Look at down. Now you can simply see that this is an integer value in my integer. First integer, I put 500, it is printed 500. This is a real value in my second real that was a, a float. I put 25.88 that is being printed. Now the third was a real value as well with a double data type 457.9990076. It is being printed in the third line. In the fourth line, we have um, a character that is your percentage I stored in fourth char. Uh, okay, that was another variable. The fifth one is your string variable with named fifth string and it has a value. This is my programming class which is being printed in the fifth line. And the sixth one is your boolean variable which had a value true and it is being printed in your sixth line. So this is how you can use the variables of different data types in your programming language. And remember that you can change the values of the variables anywhere in your program as needed because they are not constants. And if you are specifying them as constant, so remember not to change their values at all all in the whole execution of your program stay tuned stay connected and do not forget to subscribe the channel bye bye